Looking at those shots, it's really hard to believe that this currently thriving area in South Africa was once dedicated to cattle and pineapple farms with almost no biodiversity and wildlife. Pinda was established in collaboration with the local Zulu tribal community to rehabilitate the ecosystem, allowing for the return of the wildlife that had once flourished this area. Pinda is local Zulu word for return. Animals were brought in from other regions of Southern Africa to establish new populations in the conservancy. There is a lot of doom and gloom stories about biodiversity. However, this story is a hopeful one. Pinda is a modern success conservation story, so stick around to learn how they managed to do it. I think the key to the success for Pinda is the fact that they've used this ecotourism model to benefit um, not only the reserve itself, but also the local communities surrounding them. A lot of work goes into managing 30,000 hectares, making sure that animals are healthy, that they're reproducing, but not in breeding, that herbivores do not overgraze the land, that territorial animals have enough space and do not compete between each other, that invasive species of plants are under control, that the area is well protected by anti-poaching units, and that is all while still running lodges and operating tourism and well in tourism in the area that brings much needed funding towards conservation. With the data collected here by our volunteers that go out every day with one of our ecological monitors, the data feeds live into our data systems, which we can then analyze. This helps us to make our management decisions. Animal populations in Pinda are thriving. From an initial population of just 30 white rhinos, Pinda now has one of the largest white rhino populations in Africa and have been relocating and repopulating rhinos to other reserves and countries due to their success at protecting them. This has also facilitated what we call rhinos without borders. So where our white rhinos have been translocated to Botswana to start up a founding population there. Pinda is the first private game reserve ever to be a part of the Black Rhino Range Expansion Project. So this is a project together with WWF. The cheetah population here has grown so successfully that some individuals were relocated to other parts of Southern Africa to establish healthy cheetah populations there. Cheetah alone, um, Pinda and the Munyawana is currently seen as one of the most important cheetah metapopulations throughout Southern Africa. Pinda has been chosen as a release site for pangolins that have been confiscated from poachers and saved from the illegal wildlife trade. The pangolin is arguably the most trafficked animal on earth, leading to their disappearance in the world. So pangolins were reintroduced here in June 2019. Before that, pangolins have been completely extinct from the reserve. Over time, these animals have now established home ranges, territories, and thankfully have even had pups. It is also an educational ground. Numerous researches occur here every year. Very get-go, a lot of data has been collected and that has resulted in numerous PhDs, master's projects, also suitable protocols being out there on what's the right way for soft-releasing lions into new areas. I have spent here a few weeks volunteering with African Conservation Experience, participating in all the daily tasks needed for animal management and conservation like monitoring, data collection, updating ID profiles of animals, tracking, using some of the most modern technologies, trying to understand. So what is the reason of this overwhelming conservation success? Is it the modern technology and their ability to use camera traps, telemetry, satellites, drones, acoustic sensors, a variety of apps for data collection and analysis? This project is neat because our cameras are actually tools and what we're doing is collecting data that's going to help us identify these individuals in the wild at a later date. 
Is it their ability to utilize conservation tourism and volunteerism to fund these projects? Around the world, many protected areas are underfunded, allowing visitors to observe exciting and important conservation tasks provides additional source of funding for necessary management activities such as ecosystem monitoring, anti-poaching patrols, invasive species eradication, and environmental educational programs. Tourism potentially has a big role to play in education when it comes to conservation. Um, one of the best things is there's so many people that care um, and that's just really lovely to see. Just spreading the word of like the sort of work that's done here, trying to get more funding and letting people know how important this is to preserve is really important. When people connect with nature during their travels, when they see firsthand how hard it is to protect our nature and what goes into it, it can lead them into being more appreciative and become more invested in protecting it. I think the fact we don't know what we're going to see or discover each day is very exciting. Like every day I've done so far has been really different. And I've had a really unique experience seeing loads of animals that are endangered, um, so I'd say I'm pretty lucky. Of course, it is all of the above and more. This project truly exists due to the exceptional management and the work of numerous passionate people that spend hours and days in the bush, making sure that the area is thriving while educating tourists and visitors and conducting research that helps other organizations and reserves to obtain this success as well. We mainly focus on movement data and being able to correlate all of that and expand it over a few years and see the movement of different species, how they react to different weather conditions and habitats and different influences like that. Seeing their movement data, how long it's taken them to settle in this reserve will be useful for other reserves who want to do the same thing. Your time and your effort really help with things like hands-on things, if we need help lifting something or moving things, photos for ID kits, like lots of different small contributions that add up to larger contributions. I hope that this success story got you inspired and serves as a hopeful reminder. When people start seeing the benefit of having tourism in the area, um, they are more inclined to wanting to keep the area wild and they also support these new um, ventures that are being undertaken. We want to use tourism to expand you know, conservation areas and not just expand but to ensure that it sustains itself.